You know, of all the plants in my herb garden, one of the ones that I love the most are my lavender shrubs. They're just exquisite. I'm here with Sarah at Lavender at Stonegate, a wonderful place. Are you in West Lynn, right? I am in West Lynn. Yeah, and the, you do a lot of stuff here. You grow them that you can actually cut bunches, but you also sell plants. That's right. And yeah. How many varieties do you think you grow here? I grow 55 varieties. I'm up to 55 this year. Uh, we started out with about 20, and we've expanded quite a bit this year. So. Yeah, and now one of the things that I really thought was interesting is you can actually come out here and cut bunches of lavender to take home. That's right. Now, you know, although when I'm at, at my own yard, I just grab them and chop away. I'm sure that's probably not the best way to do it. So let, show me how when people come out to say that I want to buy a bunch of lavender, how would I cut this? to be effective for pruning it too as you're going. Sure. Well, there's a little difference between <clears throat> growing and pruning. If you want to just cut a fresh bunch with this one, let's say, what you'd want to do is cut it to about right here, wow. and then you get your bunch. But that's probably my biggest question that I get is how to prune lavender. And what you want to do is cut it till it hurts. <laughs> so you really want to get in there. And they don't mind being cut on, because what that does is it promotes the new growth from down below. So about two inches above the wood, you really want to give it a good wow. cut. Yeah, like that. Okay. There you go. And, and then that's scary. But that there is you scary, go. but I, I tell you, then you're going to get a nice healthy plant, and then as it gets a little bit bigger, you can hedge it up a bit, and then you have a nice, round, beautiful plant. Wonderful. And that was pretty easy, too, and you didn't mm -hmm. lop off any of my fingers, which I thank that's you for. <laughs> You're now, welcome. After you do that at home, now in this in this wonderful room, I'm seeing lavender hanging everywhere. I also see a lot of reeds. You can do a lot with lavender. Absolutely. So besides just taking that bunch and hanging it up to dry, you're going to show me a few steps on making a wreath. <laughs> I and am. I'm gonna, good luck with that. Because, okay. you know, <laughs> my, my talent doesn't lie in wreath making. So <laughs> That's okay. I'll walk you through it, William. You'll be fine. So what do we need for this? Okay. So this is our finished product. This and it, one, it's beautiful. Well, thank you. The color is exquisite. I, li I love that. This is that. one of my favorite varieties. It's called Folgate. And it's an Augustifolia, which means our English. And... This, what you want to do is take, oh, about this much, especially if you want a nice full bunch. And then you're going to bring it down like this and try to get as much as you can. So you're just straightening up the top. Yeah, just straightening up the top. That's right. Yeah, that one was sticking way out. That's right. <laughs> yeah, don't want to do that. So then what I do is just cut it about right there. And then you have your twine and I like to use moss on it because it it just makes it a little bit thicker mm -hmm. and then you just start it right right about there and that's just one of those rings you buy at, at any craft store a Absolutely. lot of nurseries carry them Michaels uh -huh. any of those places and then you're gonna take it like this and just wrap it around a couple times nice and tight and then that's your first that's your start and then you're gonna go just all the way around till you get to the end and then you put you tuck your last bunch in there, and then it's done. And just and wreath it up. Let me flip right. this one over so they can see the back mm -hmm. is just wired around. That's and that right. that's really simple. How long? Okay, but you're a seasoned professional. <laughs> but how long do you think it takes you to make one of these? Well, it, in starting out, it took me about an hour. Mm -hmm. Now it probably takes me about 45 minutes. So truly, practice does make perfect. It does indeed. And just so everyone can see, this is one that was done and has dried. So That's it right. loses some of the vibrancy of color, but the fragrance just gets better. That's right. Now this particular variety that I used is called Grosso, which is this here, uh -huh. which is more what you would call the French variety. But So this one's not quite as, as purple and vibrant as the Augustifolia. But yeah, it does fade a bit, but um, it's still very pretty and it stays a long time. Now, Sarah, you have black classes that go on here, too, I don't do. you? Tell me about some of those. Well, I'll be having wreath classes all summer, and I also do free how-to classes on how to grow lavender. So I'll be doing that um, starting now all the way through the end of August. And what's your website? It's www.lavenderatstonegate.com, and the at is A-T. So anything else that you want to know, you can go to gardentime.tv. We can click you over to their website, too. Beautiful place, lovely fragrance. They have a great little gift shop with stuff you can buy. Sarah, delightful. I'm going to go home and try to make a, a lavender <laughs> wreath out of my own stuff now. Great. Thanks for coming.